Welcome back to the news today. This is the Daily Debate. We were, before we're going out for a small break in this weekend because it's Independence Day here in uh, Israel, we want to make you understand a little bit more why we still don't have a government here. The Israeli Prime Minister received a two-week <laughs> extension to form the next coalition government as negotiations heat up ahead of a final May 6th deadline. Netanyahu and Kulano party leader Moshe Kahlon are reportedly moving closer to a striking deal, but tensions continue to rise between, guess who, Netanyahu and another of his intended partners, Jewish Home Party leader Naftali Bennett. And waiting in the wings is Isaac Herzog's rival Zionist Union Party. With me to understand all this, you said that you love them together, so we have to bring them back together. Eli Ochenberg, our diplomatic correspondent. Good evening, Lucy. And Hani Zubeda, that you want to tell me your new title? Well, it's not official, but soon chair of the Department of Political Science at the Israel, Israel Academic. Uh, yeah. Yeah, congratulations and Mazel Tov. September, it's going to be official. Thank so you. So congratulations, so look at him, <laughs> so uh, so Ali. proud. So Ali we'll Scott. be able to congratulate <laughs> Benjamin Netanyahu for establishing yeah. a, go a government well, way overdue, uh, even now. And uh, we we were talking before the uh, broadcast, and the main problem uh, of uh, this uh, whole uh, negotiation is that the uh, the parties felt it was uh, uh, the win of the block of the right wing block and uh, and they felt they all had uh, had contributed very much in order to achieve this uh, sweeping win and now they have to sacrifice way too much the inner block cannibalism is uh, just killing them and they have nothing nothing to come to to their voters uh, uh, to say look what happened when we work together it's just, it's just like i'm trying to imagine like all the left is sitting right now and having a lot of laughs yeah, well, they I are saying okay you said that we are out let's see you hanging out together and, and for what it seems, honey, they won't be able to hang out together for 18 months. No, but here goes. It's very complicated, but let's start with the rundown, because the rundown is extremely important. The rundown is as, as of now. Okay. The, the last official meeting um, ended up about an hour and a half ago, about... 75 minutes ago. So what we got is this. To be precise, 70 minutes ago. About, yeah, yeah, about 75 minutes. Like yeah, I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking at the timeline. Okay, so officially, Kahlon is is done. There's a the deal with Kahlon. Yeah, there's a deal with Kahlon. It's not signed. It's not official yet. But there's a deal. However, his path into the coalition was extremely destructive. Is done with what? What he's is done with to get. the agreement. Okay, so Kahlon is going to get Treasury. Treasury housing and the planning uh, and administration the planning treasury administration. housing and the planning, planning administration which gives him a really yeah. a, a serious economic power to make a change to uh, to do what he wanted to <coughs> which do which basically at the gives him everything that he wanted well that's not exactly sure. because he's not getting the finance committee okay and that's done with the uh, agudat israel the ultra orthodox mm. and there's another issue um, there nobody really knows who is he going to nominate for the housing Okay. Because he's not, apparently, he's not looking at his top-ranked guys, and that's going to be a major issue. Um, unbelievably so, Kahlon has a deal with... With? With? Lieberman. Even I don't... Oh, with Lieberman, Lieberman, of course, of course. They... In general, there are interesting allies now behind the scenes because Benjamin Netanyahu is ruling everything, uh, ruling the agenda. They are trying to uh, uh, to combine together and to make an out of those points. But before we move on from Kahlon, I just want to say that maybe the most severe damage for Kahlon for the long term is the fact that nobody likes him by now. He started with his hand on top, and now Bennett yeah, hates him. hates him. Lieberman is having serious trouble with him because he's another right. Yeah, difficulties <laughs> is a very di diplomatic term. The ultra orthodox, especially Shas, the, uh, the the Shas party, Arya Deri, hates him. But so it will have because he wanted to uh, cannibalize the Ministry of Interior. Because the gentlemen, when a uh, gentleman, my lady, I'm sorry, uh, when everyone uh, uh, criticizes you and not satisfied with what you're doing and hate you, it means that you're doing something right, and he's playing the political game in a really good way. Ooh. Kahlon, yeah, but he's leaving behind him uh, a dead territory, and that's a major issue what for is him. What is the dead territory? The dead territory is basically the fact that he is uh, in cahoots with all the ultra-Orthodox parties. Um, the, the Jewish home 
really doesn't like him. Okay. And some of the leaders in the Likud didn't like the fact that he waltzed in like a prince, asked things and just got them. They didn't like the way he negotiated with Benjamin Netanyahu. They felt that he's overshadowing them. And they felt that he's literally, he's yeah, he's paving his way to the next uh, So uh, I, I just thought, I, I, I need to understand. Lieberman stayed with what? With the promise that he Lieberman. will continue being the next foreign, foreign minister? Yes. This is what he wants. Yes. This That's is the only, the only he's, card he's he has at. left. Yeah. He, he also wants the absorption office, but really nobody wants but the absorption office. But explain to me, office. please, yeah. explain to me, because it seems for me that uh, the, our last pro uh, uh, foreign minister, uh, which was uh, Lieberman, and maybe our next uh, foreign minister that will be Lieberman had no influence actual yeah, influence impact. on yeah. the ground on the um, on the government on what is happening outside or inside Israel even in inside his own <laughs> never to I don't even want to start talking about his own party but uh, it's why why he wants this and not something else that maybe can work better because, for him because it Prestige. is considered yeah because it is considered to be one of the three major cabinet members in the Israeli government. That's the only reason. It will be an extremely easy position for Benjamin Netanyahu because then he will be able to strip Lieberman from almost everything. Don't forget, Benjamin Netanyahu is the one who's directly dealing with the United States. There's no middleman. The ambassador will only call Benjamin Netanyahu. He will not speak to the uh, Minister of um, uh, Foreign Affairs. He will deal directly with the UN. He deals directly with the EU. He deals directly with the OECD. I would assume that he will lose France he will lose London, he will lose Germany, he will lose other territories. And the most important aspect in that term is that he will not have leverage against him because if he walks off the coalition, then Benjamin Netanyahu will have a much easier life because he will bring back two cabinet members, which is the foreign and the absorption, and Benjamin Netanyahu will stay with the 61 seats, which Kahlon doesn't really want. And there's another problem with Lieberman, which is he, that he's unwilling to enlarge the number of, uh, of, of ministers, uh, ministers in the government, uh, which, uh, as for now, it's absolutely impossible to uh, establish a, a smaller uh, coalition. There's a reason for that. I, I the reason is that I, I they just... want to leave as many as as many members from the Jewish Everybody, home outside. I, I just need to understand, everybody else are satisfied? What is happening inside the Likud party oh, right that's now? that's a great question. This is really one of the hottest arenas at the moment. What is going on outside is <laughs> nothing comparing to what's going on inside the Likud, because Likud members understand that this will not be their time to shine, and they really hope it will. We have so many people. We have Steinitz, and Erdan, and Katz, and Sylvan Shalom, and Gila Gamliel, and Miri Regev, who was very outspoken about the uh, case uh, that uh, Netanyahu will not nominate her as a minister. Newton, she, said she said that she will kill him. She will uh, execute the Kharakiri and he will be over within <laughs> the party. So I'm really not, uh, I do not envy Netanyahu that he has to deal not only with Bennett and Lieberman and Kahlon, but with his own yeah. uh, party members. And who is the biggest rival for Benjamin Netanyahu inside his party right now? There's no such thing right now. Kahlon. Right now, yeah. <laughs> yeah this is what I was <laughs> about to one. say. Because you have to look outside the party to understand who is his biggest rival, which I'm not sure he is his biggest rival, because what Benjamin Netanyahu will do is he will throw the young lions at each other, and he will have a safe back. Th that is, Kahlon, Erdan, Katz, Sylvan Shalom, all these guys will run against each other while Benjamin Netanyahu will have a clear cut. Guys, I, I, really, it doesn't sound like, um, or smell to you like, in, in, say in the sooner, word. sooner say or the word. later uh, uh, we will uh, the see word. a coup. A coup? No, a coup? elections. Oh. Election. A coup? Yes. Uh, uh, this okay. is what I'm yes. saying, okay. a coup. Oh, but <laughs> yeah. the scenario of going uh, for another round of election is not uh, far-fetched at the moment. Yes. People are talking, people are exhausting from this negotiation. It's not the toughest negotiations they, ev they have ever uh, uh, been engaged in, but uh, it, it really is, it f they feel like they're in a deadlock, and uh, one of the uh, options is to go for another one of elections, and then the smaller parties will be completely over, and we will have an entire Believe it or game. not, right <coughs> now in the Likud, they are sorry that they didn't accept the 425 threshold that Lieberman offered to begin with, because then <laughs> they would have had a, a parliament without a, a, the Lieberman party and merits, you know, which I, I, means a whole different game. I, yeah. You know, I, I, and we didn't even start talking about maybe someone or somebody or some woman who is pulling behind the scenes. Yeah. Uh, this is why uh, the yeah. Jewish home. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, that's our next point because we were talking about it. the Jewish home 
literally, um, the senior the senior ministry which was promised to them is not going to be on the table. It's a done deal. There are no more senior um, uh, ministries for them. Um, the finance committee was taken away from them. Already done deal. Gaffney is going to be the chair, and of course, um, Ayala Chaked. Ayala Chaked <laughs> is kind of like a red flag in front of um, the first. Lady. Yeah, running. She's from the Jewish bulls. Home uh, Party, and she was yes, working with Benjamin the, she's Netanyahu. The, she's, She's the number two in the party. She, everybody wants her to be. She in. was part of the staff of Benjamin yes. Netanyahu with, with Naftali Bennett, yes. of course, and with uh, Yoaz Hendel, yeah. who was the, his advisor. Out, yeah. All of them were the out. Entirety. You know, I, I, I'm trying to think from all this, <laughs> like, uh, you know, in which country I can imagine, or do, help me, because you're going to be the head of the <laughs> political science department, in which country do you see such a big influence of the, of the wife of the prime minister on the negotiation of the coalition? We, we had those. We had those. We had Nancy Reagan during that era, in which now we know she brought various people with various stones and various cards, which told the future to Ronald Reagan, and as a result, he decided to go with the SDI. We had these women, but... We will potentially have Bill Clinton as yes, a first, a yes. very influential uh, first, first lady. Man, first, first gentleman, man. and first lady Hillary. We had those, but, but the lady. thing in Israel, but the thing in Israel is not an issue of a macro level planning. It's personal vendettas. But exactly. This yeah. is what I'm saying. I do not remember this This is what you're of, saying. No, yeah, it's like it's a personal thing. Yes. It's uh it's just if you're if you're talking with me in a good way and in a nice way and you're doing what I'm telling you, so all good. But if you are not, no no no, you're but, out. But so this there's, there's one important aspect here. Nobody lasted more than three years next to the first next to the Israeli first lady. So there's no such thing as long term other than her husband, of course I should say yeah, that. There's no long term <laughs> relations with her. However, after we spoke about all these rifts, there's one thing that unites all the right yes. blocks. And this is the hatred towards the high uh, court. One of the things that uh, the Likud is now promoting is really weakening uh, the high court uh, uh, t and the, to the maximum uh, level. They're talking about uh, uh, increasing the number of political nominations. Uh, that means uh, now it's four out of nine, and they want extra two or three uh, uh, candidates no. yeah, to uh, uh, be in the, this high uh, committee. Furthermore, they want to limit uh, uh, the Supreme Court's ability to overrule laws that uh, uh, are being made by Parliament and that uh, they will need a majority of eight, which is rare, which rarely yeah, happens. Will not happen. And uh, it really is a, a direct war towards uh, the High Court, and all of them are unanimous, and this is maybe. What does uh, it mean? It means what does it mean? Well, the Supreme Court. Should we, for, should we be worried as people well, who are living in a democratic I don't, country? No, I, I don't think we should be worried. I think there was a war um, um, waged by the Supreme Court on the Israeli, on the Israeli legislator. Yes. Um, Aaron Barak stood at the forefront of this war. He called it the, the judicial activism. However, on the other hand side, th there's Daniel Friedman, who is as big as a um, legal scholar, at least as Aaron Barak, if not bigger than him. Mm -hmm. Although he never wa never uh, served in the Supreme Court, he was the chief, well, the, the, the justice minister of Israel. And he's completely against this intervention. He argues that while the judges in the Supreme Court, the honorable judges in the Supreme Court, were never elected, unlike the delegates in the Knesset, they will not and should not be able to overturn rules, unlike the United States case. So I think we're heading towards a very rough area. And it is important to say, all the 67 members in the right bloc, including the ultra-Orthodox parties, support this law, and they are willing to do it even without coalition negotiations. So, um, you know, I, I just want to ask you, uh, before we're finishing, uh, how stable can we uh, today, after everything that you're saying, ever, ever, everything that you're mentioning, is it possible to run a country in this way? We're just in the eve of the Independence Day. It's the, it, it, you know, it's just 67 years for this country. Is it possible to, to run like that, a country? 
Well, there will definitely be uh, an emotional baggage after this uh, coalition negotiations. But don't forget that we really had the, at the high point of, uh, of emotions and uh, everything is really at its peak. And after they will manage to establish a coalition, it will all relax a bit and then they will have to. Uh, but a stable coalition, it uh, will not be definitely. Yeah, but pay attention. Put your eye on this gentleman. No, we didn't even start yeah, talking about I, him. I know we forgot him. He's right in the corner. But he, he is, he wants to go into the coalition. Isaac Herzog. He has what? major issues in his parties. And what, I think... he will be a Likud member now? <laughs> well, Nothing is done. Well, this is the that, most important but thing. But what they're doing is they're making calculations. Yeah, you, we... want, you want uh, another country that is less decisive than us? You want? No. Saudi Arabia just decided, reports emerging that Saudi Arabia just decided to stop the bombing campaign. Of course, one said in Yemen, of course. Yes, no, no, yes. But this is here, this is the Middle East. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Two seconds, two minutes, and I'll be back.